Mm. Hopefully you heard my belly. <sighs> um, just sitting here drinking beer with Doug. Pretty normal occurrence, I'd say. I don't even have a beer, but... I have a tan line from a watch. Uh, but anyway, we're supposed to be... Um... Doing exciting things. Yeah, we'll say exciting things. I don't want to reveal it yet. We're supposed to be doing exciting things with uh, Nick Seuss, of course, and uh, our buddy Scott. We were supposed to be here at Five Sharp. It's a big job. We wanted to have some time to test it out afterwards. And uh, I don't know what time it is now. About 20 after 5. I know it's after 5. And here we are. This is real odd. Right. <laughs> this may be the first time I've ever sat in the garage with, <laughs> yeah. with Nick. Like Wildcat Nick. Yeah. And waited for the other Nick to show up. This is really unusual. Yeah, like Doug swept and I tried to help. I mean, so we'll walk out and show you what we have in terms of uh, competition, we'll say. So... Got the uh, Nick Mav, and what's going to be coming in here will eventually be racing against the Nick Mav. Yep, and I wouldn't be against, you know, busting my YXZ out as well. It's just sitting in my yard over there, so. Right. <sighs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. We should probably just not pretend like people don't know what we're doing already. I'm sure it's going to be in the title of the video, so. <laughs> <laughs> How awkward. I, I always forget about Just that. very amateur. So, <laughs> after we get the supercharger on Scott's YXZ, yeah. uh, we're going to touch it off against uh, Nick's basically stock X3 Maverick and then uh, my bolt-on YXZ as well. That's the plan anyways. If those guys show up and allow us to get this thing done before freaking dark sets in, we uh, yeah. should have some cool races coming. And we got, we got the drone chilling. I mean, we're ready. We're ready for a YXZ to be here. It's not a clean garage, but good enough yeah. you know, to work with. So. so I'm just going to cut to the YXZ in the garage. Ready? Yay, there's a YXZ in here now. <laughs> Let's see the blower. Let's see the blower. Let's see the blower. This is, this is exciting. Damn, comes with like a sick Donaldson filter. Yeah, dude, look at that little fucker. That's awesome. Yeah. Sick. That is cool. cool. Look at that thing. That's fucking cool, dude. That's why I'm saying, like, their customer... Yeah, the customer service isn't the best, but the product speaks for itself. It looks great. It looks yeah, great. that's what I'm saying. Listen, we're not trying to suck Packard's D right now. Right. There's no sort of deal on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just pay full price like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> ain't no problem. We appreciate it, though. Damn, that manifold's sick, yeah. too. Holy yeah. shit, that's CNC. Look at that thing, Doug. That's a thing of beauty. Nice. Man, yeah. That's a lot of machining, man. It's a lot of aluminum moved. Yeah. It's very cool. Heck, yeah. Well, oh, all ah, sorts so of what stuff. What we got in here? Well, gauges. So the gauges are there. Okay, so that's just like the packages. Pre-assembled those. Yeah. Uh, man, doesn't look too bad. Wow. Cool. What do you think, Seuss? It's going to be cool. It's going to be pretty fucking cool. So if that, I do these videos... you totally going to get a run for... Uh, you're you're going to get a run for money. Oh, I hope so. So, um, oh, look at that pod. That's sick. Okay, okay, got that in already. Yeah, I did. I tried to get as much as I could to save as much time as possible. Man, that's just good call. Look at this guy. That ain't reasonable. <laughs> I should learn from him. <laughs> right? Are you taking notes? <laughs> Barely, but I am. <laughs> so overall plan here, I think, is just to uh, get in and pull the stock air box and jump out. I know some oil lines got to come out because they're in the way where. They're where the blower mount mounts and you know we gotta put a put a crank pulley on and those are kind of the major components put the plumb on plumb it up plumb it up plumb it should be plumb it. Cake, right plumb it side by side blog.com garage We've decided to get the bed out, right? I think that's the, the easiest thing, so at least it sure seems easy. You know what, maybe it's not easier, but maybe for the viewers, we'll take the bed out.
so they can see what we're doing. How about that? Wow, that's a really good idea. This kind of reminds me of working on the Wildcat. Although it's a little bit less dirty, it's still not clean. That's not a dig on you, Scott. I've been that guy before. I'm not, I'm not mad about the cleanliness level. Yeah, it so could be a hell of a lot worse. Clearly there was at least an attempt. Yeah. Whereas, you know, when your stuff comes over typically, just no attempt. There's like this much <laughs> mud on it. Look at this fresh ass exhaust, by the way, too. That's a full HMF unit. That looks good, man. <laughs> Oh, it's even stepped. Nice. Did you see that, Doug? She stepped real nice. Horsepower. Man. Nothing like mad. stepping up your exhaust. How mad are you going to be when this thing just smokes your new exhaust? I'm not going to be mad. <laughs> I'll be happy, dude. I ain't going for speed. That's why it's remaining stock, bud. Part of the experience. I just wanted the suspension and the reliability and the desire. Power. X3. Adrenaline. <laughs> Adrenaline. That's what I always forget. <laughs> well, let's pop them seats out. What size are those? For sure, pop Twelvers? Them yeah, I mean, if we're taking the bed out, they're going to have to come out, so. Metric socket. 12. Ratchet. Extendo. There you go, bud. I thought you want to use the freaking impactoid, too, bud. Yeah, right. There you go. Impactoid. Look at that thing. That is just so beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah, I thought that was an intercooler at first, but now nah, it's just the machining lines. <whistles> nice unit. Real nice unit. We have what I'll call the fighting of the push pins. These things are so friggin' silly. Yeah, they're tough to get out. Those players definitely helped though. That was from Doug's Maverick days. Boom! Well, they're threaded push pins. They're a little different, you know. Yeah, when they don't thread, spin, though. Yeah. Right. This way. So what we're doing right now, so the supercharger mounts here, right, and then kind of resides in this space. So these oil lines are totally in the way. So the oil okay. line's got to come out. We've got some new soft lines. So Scott was just describing what we got to do with this fitting on a motor. So this top line will route, you know, something like that. And then the bottom line... You know, we'll see, but something something like that, right? Down around the bottom of the supercharger. Hmm. Get rid of these guys. So I think we'll start by uh, dropping the oil out of it, and then we'll get them oil lines out of there. Oh, you uh, dry sump. Yeah, after these guys get the bed out, we can pull the intake off, and start bolting stuff together. So yeah, according to some people, you gotta take the cage out to get this bed out. Man. Gosh, she's tight. Here it is. More stuff? Oh gosh, look at that. Another 10 mil. It's Mike fucking Reed. Whoa. Look at this fucking guy. What up, tight shirt? Huh? So what up, tight shirt? <laughs> How you been, big boy? Good. Yeah, man. Little blower. Come check out the supercharger, dude. You're gonna like it. So what, uh, you're gonna copycat this thing now too? Get yourself a <laughs> yeah. blue YXZ with a supercharger on it? Some of us are buying houses soon, so. Jesus! Listen, I've been in the house field, it sucks. It sucks. I'm gonna let Scott go all the way on it. <laughs> let Scott take the blue YXZ Scott pride. pulled the man cart right out and threw it down. <laughs> Just fucking flopped it out and said, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Getting a supercharger. <laughs> Crossbar is removed. Hey, you guys, we should have checked YouTube for a video on how to take I was looking too, man. I did, there was nothing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Mike, you're retarded? Come on. Hey, you this came out. You retard, man. I was also half drunk when I did it. <laughs> I'm getting there, but I'm not doing anything. Nice. All right, yeah, I don't know what those guys are talking about taking the cage off. Yeah, I, I mean, it. I understand. No, I was really drunk that night. Wow. Dead, so you're not the only here. one that said it. Man, I kind of like how that's built. That looks tough. Yeah. I've not seen under the bed before. Bed delete. Leave her Dude, bed delete. Bed delete. Bed delete. Bed delete. Bed delete. Bed delete. You know, this can't, fucking... can't sleep on it. Yeah. Right, yeah, it's not even a real can't bed. Put anything in it. it, just falls out. Beer in it all Listen, Scott's a man of first, alright? He's gonna be the first guy with the bed delete. Listen. Oh, okay, so now, like Doug was saying earlier, he cracked the sump. Yeah. And he is uh, getting the oil out. 
We're draining the tank, then we're gonna drain the sump on the engine. Probably not necessary, but we're gonna put fresh oil in anyway, so. For, for fresh. And then pull these oil lines off, and then uh, get the air box off. Do those two things concurrently. I'm gonna be throwing the supercharger on. Can you get it or no? There you go. This is a big moment right here. Dang. Not Dang. To, not to return. Dang. So you want to make sure you drop as much dirt in your throttle bodies as possible when you remove your air box. That's what I'd recommend. Just give them a good wipe afterwards. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, bud. Getting close. Okay, so there's something we got to do with this plug. Okay, interesting. Right, we'll have to look at the look at the kit for that. Actually, I think we might have to pull the sensor out of the stock air box and plug it back into the harness. I think that's yeah. and tape it off. I think that's what you do. Is that an IAT or what is that? And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, probably, man. I don't know. These Yamahas. So this is the supercharger bracket. This yeah. is supercharger go on here. Oh wow! Look at that. The engine mount. So, listen. At least that's what I think it does. I didn't, you know, really like, like we, like we covered. We didn't have any instructions. I haven't really researched this thoroughly. So, if anybody knows better, feel free to jump in and stop me. But I mean, you are wearing a Yamaha racing shirt. I feel like if you're spending three thousand dollars on a supercharger, it should come with some sort of instruction manual. You think we'd have done enough of these videos that I've had learned by now to unplug my <laughs> Loctite bottle. Mm. Start, but unplug the bottle. Loctite. Start unplugging and you do it again. Oh, that was a good song. Um, all right, so looking at that bracket, I'm going to say that looks pretty sick. It's cool. We're getting there. Looks it's cool. awesome. It's a good bracket. Scott, it looks awesome. Look at that bracket, Scott. I've seen the bracket. Damn, dude. I've been looking at that bracket for a long time. Um, so what did you All just right, do there, bud? Check it out. Okay, so we just took the stock flywheel bolt out because that's uh, going to get replaced by an adapter that Packard sends you for the pulley. And that's where the, the pulley goes. Yep, so that's torqued pretty good. So you're going to want to uh, find a way to hold the crankshaft. What I just did was I took a great big screwdriver and stuck it up in the drive shaft going forward in the yoke. You know, through the skid plate, held it, had these guys crack it loose. Piece of cake. So, cracker bud, let's see the adapter. The adapter's fucking. That thing looks sick. Good. It's Mahoney. So, that kind of must work with the down. seal and everything as well. I think, yeah, you need it. Totally water. machine. This is another thing, doesn't come in the instructions. Kind of a probably not necessary for this, I but. I told him I was gonna keep mine Mike's just gonna go ahead and talk over the video. <laughs> Listen, when you're talking about driveways, <laughs> this is important. You look good in that shirt, Mike. Anyways, so uh, this is kind of like a boosted sled trick that we do for the sleds with big boost when you got a big heavy intake. I know Packer gives you a rod to hold this thing on, but a little bit of hairspray in your boots keeps this thing from popping off the throttle bodies when you're getting the getting the boost. So is that LA looks or what are you what are you working with? It's that? uh it's Rave 4X Mega. So I would definitely recommend going with that brand and only that brand. Do you have stock in Rave? I mean that doesn't need to be discussed. Boom, dude, she's on, bud. Yep. So. Intake is on. Doug's locked tight and supercharger bolts. It is it's about, about time to bolt this monstrosity onto this YXZ. I'd call it exciting. It's not not exciting. Oh, damn. Yeah, it's not exciting. Oh, dang. Hopefully this works. It's oh, dang. Like a test fit or anything. Yes. <laughs> we never test fit our we stuff around here. We just put things on and they don't fit and they look like idiots. It hasn't really happened yet. That is sick. Wow. That's a big boy. That's a very big boy. Wow. We just bolted on the unit that's just going to stress your motor to the absolute maximum every time you hit the throttle. <laughs> love it. Come on, Doug. <laughs> Be positive about no, these I mean, things. I love it. I'm totally in support of all things forced induction. This is awesome. I wish it was going on mine. It's cool. So here's the airbox. Nice little Donaldson unit. Little Donaldson unit. All you desert racers out there. Huge fan of these. What if you uh, 
So as it turns out, getting this belt on, pretty goddamn hard. Oh, we were so close. It was starting over the edge, but... Oh, we'll get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not reaching in and trying to grab it with a finger? Which finger were you using, Nick? I was using both. Uh, I was putting both my, my good hand and my bad hand in danger. You have a bad hand? Yep. Okay. Can you do this? I didn't think so. That's the last you'll see of that. <laughs> He's highly sensitive right now. I just had too much pizza here. Feel like doo-doo shit. <laughs> I feel like my body is pumping marinara <laughs> sauce for blood. <laughs> I can feel my belly just fucking shaking. <laughs> my butthole's quivering. <sighs> Boys, we're finally getting somewhere. Nick, Scott, it's been a long road. Be honest with you here. It's still a long road. So, we're getting it together. I mean, we'll get it to the point where we can fire it up, but we're gonna, no, we're gonna have to come back and like fix a lot of little things because some of the, the details of the kit leave a lot to be desired. So, there's a lot of zip ties holding things together. There's a lot of kind of temporary solutions to get this thing fired up that need uh, some detailing, so. I mean, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. It's going to be cool. I'm excited to get it fired up. But we're a long ways from done. What you're trying to say is that a little piece of bent aluminum and a giant hose clamp isn't the best thing to hold your airbox on? It's not the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Just tighten her down real good, bud. It's been four hours start to finish here. When I say finish... Not really done. But uh, Doug just ran some boost gauge line. We're going to go ahead and just cap it with a screw. About halfway. Halfway ran, but we can't wait any longer here. This thing run, so. We're all ready. Do we need to think about anything first? This is it neutral? neutral? Don't worry, I'll check. This <laughs> is neutral. Neutral right, drums on, chargers on, we got a little back in it. Yeah. Start her up. Uh oh. Okay. Interesting. Doug, all right, we're back on this YXZ. It's been a couple of days, so. Yep, talked to Packard. The issue was uh, with some poorly machined parts that they had outsourced, so they're selling so many of these things that, you know, they outsource some of them trying to, to catch up, and the shop that uh, was helping them machine these a little bit too large, so as it's in there spinning, um, it started to gall on this outer piece that holds the seal, and uh, next thing you know, she's uh, jamming up and Right. Not running, so, so you can yeah. actually see this one. It's a lot more clearance. Lots of space. So the other one was very, very tight. Uh, went together, rotated okay, but then when you you know put all that belt tension on it, fired the engine up, you know, those two pieces spinning, going mm -hmm. up. Had a bad time. Yeah, so basically, if you don't understand at this point yet, this outer piece here basically holds a seal, right? And this outer piece goes into the stator cover, yep. and this inner piece here bolts onto the end of the crankshaft, which connects right. to your supercharger pulley. Yep. Pulley goes here when the engine starts, this thing yep. does this. And so the clearance between this and this was too tight on yep. the one that came with it. This one. That, yeah, that looks a lot better. Yeah. So. Cool. Scott, listen, we got you covered today, bud. Ready for it. It'll catch here in just a moment. Oh, all right, I was wondering. Yeah. All right, all right I got it. Oh, shit. I mean, Doug really cranked it. She's tight, bud. Crank that soldier boy. Underestimate the Doug pound. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new standard. <laughs> the current conversion factor is 3.26 Doug pounds per foot pound. Oh, I got it. Changes. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Just 
because it gets more yoked up every week. Yeah. It's on like a sliding scale, yeah. as they call it. Just go to the website to find it. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Gosh, I forgot how excited I was about this thing, man. I was looking at our post on Instagram. If you guys haven't checked that out, Instagram.com slash side by side blog. And uh, this thing looks sick, dude. It's really, really cool. I mean, it's just a root style bull. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? The wind kind of got taken out of us when we, you know, when it kept binding up. You know, it yeah. was real exciting. We were firing the thing up and it just kept binding. So that sucked, but back in it now. Luckily, it's pouring rain. You know, just can't catch a break, but you it's might okay. Not be able to get the thing out, you have to take it out. She's working the belt on. I think we stretched it out a little bit. Yeah. Just getting good at this. Should we just uh, leave the uh, zip tie open? It's time to start this bad mamma jamma, dude. I'm pretty bad geeked bad right bad now. Bad. How are you feeling, Scott? I'm feeling a lot better today. Are you scared? <sighs> a little bit. All those times it locked up? God, that was annoying. That yeah. was annoying, dude. At least we know it'll run now. So, I mean, we've got a lot of, a lot of the questions. Uh, Work blower. Here. Work. Is it neutral? The neutral parking brakes on. Feel better already. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. There, yeah, boy. there she is. That's cool. Look at that little blower. Give her a rev. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> oh shit! Oh yeah! Damn, dude! Yeah, kill it, man! Wow! Let's tighten this thing up. It actually freaking works, dude! Wild. Actually works. <laughs> Damn! It sounds so cool. On you guys, when I repped it, all you guys go. Oh, <laughs> like your eyes would open bigger every time I yeah, it's, No heat at all. Alright, so you guys have seen it run. We're getting deadly close to ripping this thing. Still raining. It's been about an hour, so we've uh, done a couple things. Put a wide band O2 on it. Doug made this beautiful little bracket right there for it. We're running all sorts of stuff uh, up to the front for wiring. He put one of the Weller Racing thermostat housings on it, which you can barely see, but there it is. Uh, along with the thermostat wiring. Um, but yeah, that's it, man. Look at that sweet supercharger. It's so cool, dude. I mean, we're basically just killing time at this point until the rain lets up enough to let this thing eat. Right. So, gauges. It's going to eat, though. I mean, the wide band's working. What else do you really need? All right, so here's what he went with for gauges. So he's got this cool gauge pod thing. I think it's metal. I don't know. But it uh, goes in the center, and we got uh, three different gauges going to it, all autometer stuff. Scott's got them here. Show off the gauges, bud. There you go. Wideband boost water temp. Good stuff. The big moment has come. Start it up, Scott. There's the gauges, by the way. Look at that shit. <laughs> Got the countdown for it to start working. Let's look at the blower. She's got a sound to her. It's cool. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, we wrapped it up a little bit. You can hear the whine. Look at you. Oh, yeah. Look at the boost. Look at the boost. setup 37 the last one didn't work let's not forget they don't give you any friggin instructions with these damn kits 
which is just so absurd. But there's this, I don't know if I said it before, but wastegate solenoid actuator thing in there that does something, who friggin' knows. Regardless, it's just been a constant source of frustration, anger, madness, depression, sadness. Pretty much all the things you don't want to feel after you spend three grand on a blower. And David's gonna go out there and talk with them. So here comes Doug for the verdict. Did set up 37 make five pounds? Because before we we're only making two and a half. That face. I can't read it. You're still missing some boost, bud. Is it making only dose and a half now? Yeah, yep, yep. We're back to just two and a half PSI, so. Uh, yeah, we just got David out there to warm up. Yeah, we got some work to do. Got some work to do. I don't know, man. I feel like it's I feel like it's the bypass valve set up incorrectly. Yeah, there's something going on. In my gut gut feel at this point. The solenoid, the actuation valve seems to be functioning. You know, at idle at zero psi. You roll into it, the bills, you know, the build, the boost builds. It's got good torque, but it just uh, it just craps build, off before just five. Any boost. Yeah. Mm. Yep. So. Son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Make a phone call, I guess, tomorrow, and. Uh... All right, let's catch everybody back up here real quick, Doug. What the hell's going on? All right, so what is it? This is a week, week and a half later um, after we put the supercharger on. Um, took it out um, and just couldn't get any more than two and a half pounds of boost out of it. So couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, we redid a lot of things, played with the plumbing on the bypass valve. Turns out we had it correct um, and it just wasn't making boost. So got some new parts from Packard, new uh, control solenoid. Um, Scott put that in already. That didn't work. Right. So today we've got some new internals for the, the bypass valve, wastegate, whatever you want to call it, um, that are supposedly updated, right? So we're going to pull this off, swap the internals out, and hope we can make more power than stock. Right. Yeah, so we had it out ripping, and it was just about as fast as stock. So it's making a little bit more power. There's a little bit more parasitic loss there, so kind of just canceled itself out. Basically a wash. It just sounds yeah. cool. It just doesn't make power yet. So. Right. It's the coolest sounding $3,000 supercharger that does nothing. <laughs> anyway, so let's uh, pull this thing apart and uh, get her ripping, bud. You're right. Hmm. Hmm. All right, so I just pulled this thing off. Pretty simple, right? We'll clean it up a little bit. I mean, you can kind of look in there and you see a piston. Right. That moves. There's so it's got to be a diaphragm and a spring and... So, yeah, I mean, it's got like gosh. kind of a questionable looking O-ring in there, so it'd be interesting to take it apart. I just don't get this. So any other supercharger kit in the world, even if you buy a $5,000 Vortex Centrifugal Supercharger Kit for your Mustang, you get some piece of shit Boss Bypass Valve, or Bosch, Right. You get a three thousand dollar packet kit for your YXZ. Like, the most badass bypass <laughs> valve ever. Billet integrated instead of just some <laughs> external. Yeah, plumb in. I mean, you can get one for thirty bucks at AutoZone if it breaks. That thing, <laughs> Listen, if it breaks, you're fucked. Listen, if this doesn't work, we're getting a thirty dollar one from AutoZone and making it work. Yeah, I agree. Ooh. So all sorts of new parts. stuff. So this is what Packard sent us, which is exciting. So what does it look like we have here? What'd they give you, Scott? Do you know? I do not. <laughs> All sorts of shit. They didn't tell <laughs> they you? They sent me, uh, well, that's the new, uh, new and improved, uh, wastegate piston hmm. valve. I mean, it definitely, I can't, Hopefully it definitely looks yeah. significantly different from the little bit that I could see. Right. You know, nothing, that doesn't look like anything on these parts, so. We'll Shocker. here and see, uh, see how different it is. All right, so the updated uh, piston, the internals of this thing, are vastly different than what was loaded in it. So this is the setup that came out, just real basic, you know, piston right, couple of O-rings, a spring, and then a cap that came over top of it. This new setup is is two-piece. You got this dude here, and then you've got, you know, what looks like a legitimate uh, internal piston to a wastegate. It's got a diaphragm in it, so this piece looks a lot nicer makes a lot more sense to us so you know we're hopeful that this is going to straighten it out we're going to throw a little grease in here you know on the uh, area where the o-rings travel put her back together and see if we get some more power 
Oh. And the <sighs> it's almost time, Scott. Almost. Listen, we got your back, bud. All right. Oh, I, I see that. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a bit different. Again, no instructions on the uh, rebuild, so thanks for that, Packard. And then, we saw her eating pizza, but at the same time, we paid three grand for something. I expect some friggin' instructions. Apparently, too cool for that. Right. This looks fun, too. Yeah, it's, you know, came off easier and it goes in. I think we might actually loosen that silicone tube up. Push That's it back. typical. Typical. Okay, so, this is it. We had a leak at the throttle body. We got that figured out. It, uh, it's going to make full power now, buds. Start that thing up. Yeah! Letter 8, bud. She sounds yeah, savage. Sounded she sounded sounds better. good. Did you see him catch second and just destroy <laughs> the grass? Oh, that it does good. sound good. It's yes. got a really good sound to it. That HMF full exhaust, man. Yeah, they're doing it right. Oh, yeah. Listen to that. He's in fourth That's right fourth. there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Woo. fifth out here, no problem. Damn. No problem. Damn. 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 What do you think, bud? Oh, I like it. I like it. <laughs> oh, shit. It sounds awesome. It sounded significantly better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually had to slow down. I was at like 74. Wait, <laughs> okay. 74? Like 62 out there last night. <laughs> so, uh, wow. Wow. All right. Kind of boost. Five, roughly four to five all the time. And once in a while when I shift it, it's up like about slow. Man. man. Okay, okay. I guess the pressure in the plenum could be the same and it just wasn't getting to the throttle body. I don't know. Who really knows? Yeah, and I mean, if it's up over, you know, between four and five, like that's that's inching into the correct range. You right. Know? I mean, you're going to have some variation in gauges and the way things are plumbed. And God damn, I'm excited. Let her, let her eat, Doug. Wow. All right, I'll take it. We need your opinion. It's It sounds more powerful. It looks more powerful. You exploded the lawn when you pulled yeah, out. I didn't mean to. No, that's fine. <laughs> Were you in four-wheel drive both those runs? First one I was in two-wheel drive, second one I put it in four-wheel okay. drive. Got a lot that's, better traction. That's pretty good to have been able to get into fifth. I mean, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh, fourth? Okay. Fourth, that's seventh. Oh, I'm excited. Listen to it. Just listen to it. Doug's coming in, sliding. Ooh, he's got the smile on his face. Okay, it's fast now. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yep, yep. Huge difference. Huge difference. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that was, you know, 72, 74 mile an hour in four-wheel drive out here. Fuck, so dude. No problem, and I only see low 60s in mine. Oh, no. So, yeah. The X3 only does 71. Oh. She's turned up now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, awesome, man. So how's the torque down low? It's real. It's Yeah, it's, it's significantly better. Like, the boost is just there all the time, man. Right. It's, you know, it's, that roots blower. Yeah, you touch the throttle, and it, it jumps real good. So. Yeah, because you've put, what, 2,300 miles on your YXZ, roughly? I got, uh, yeah, I've put about 23 on myself. So you know exactly how they act. Yeah, yeah, no, I was like, I'm real used to them. <laughs> it's it's, it's you know, significantly different. So oh, so. awesome. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Hell yeah. I'm excited to uh, maybe see it against a couple other machines. Let's stage a race against a stock YXZ, and then a stage a race against the X3. Not against that. All right, let's do it. I say stock YXZ. We're talking full bolt-on YXZ. Bolt-on, not full bolt-on, maybe bolt-on. Two-in-exhaust YXZ. <laughs> I'm excited still.
let's do it. Scott, hell yeah, buddy. Well, That's dude, and it's it's and like the recluse just makes it so weird when you're not used to that. But it's it's so much more of an intense driving experience than the X3. It, X3, you put in high, and well, here we go. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> just bounce and shift in the noise. <laughs> it sounds like I'm exploding the gearbox on every shift, and I downshift, and it's cracking. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a test. Uh, it's yeah, no, that's a good description. They are just loud, noisy, just visceral machines. Oh, let's run some, uh, let's run some races here. Yeah, bud. We got Mike in the X3, Bone Stock. This is my X3. Absolutely nothing done to it. We got Steve coming out in his tuned and intaked and exhausted X3. Probably somewhere 200 horsepower. Then we got Doug in the uh, Bolton YXZ, a Kropovich exhaust. Little uh, R2C air filter, you guys know all about that. So we're gonna start a little drag race sesh here. Oh, my X3 is so clean too. Uh, all right, so we got everybody out here. We got Mike in mind, like I said before. Do a couple little test runs here. Traction is very limited right now. The launch pad is not doing good, but we're doing it anyway for you guys. Anything for the fans of the blog. So this is the big showdown number one. I'm definitely not far enough down the track to really, really get a good gauge of uh, who's doing what. But we'll try to zoom in at the end. Wow. 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 He might beat the X3. I'm up on the hill now. A little better vantage point. You can hear Steve's X3 just screaming. This is the second race. Exhaust YXZ tune for a supercharged versus X3. Oh, so close! Oh gosh, I don't know who won. Wow. All right, so here's big race number two. Bone stock X3, flashed exhaust intake X3, YXZ, supercharged YXZ. Nice. Mikey, what do you think, big boy? Once we get out, his YXZ settles, and I mean, it's, I got the, like, the launch on him, and he just stays. It's so close. I actually almost wonder if he aired down a little bit, got a little more hook. Yeah. Because his tires look like they're pumped pretty hard. Yeah. What do you think, Dougie? My brother, he threw a bunch of mud in my face. <laughs> I see that. That's just, just, just not right. <laughs> so, I'm going to see if I can get Scott to do a roll. Okay, yeah, I think a roll would be good. Be yeah. What do you think about the uh, supercharged YXZ? Supercharged surprised me a little bit. I, guess, I shouldn't say surprised, but like its strength is really in the first part of the race. Mm -hmm. I've seen like it really pulls out strong. And I, I mean, he's pulling on me all the way. But, uh, you know, compared to the X3s, I guess, I don't know. You know, in hindsight. It's pretty close, man. Expected. Yeah, down track, it doesn't, from what I can tell, it doesn't really look like they're moving on each other. No. All that much? No, it's, it's all on the launch. A couple times, uh, Scott's YXZ launched super hard. Right. And then, you know. It's just traction limited. It's yeah, so slick down there. The lines are different because we got a bunch of rain, right? So if you line up in the grass, you spin a lot. If you mm -hmm. line up in an old lane, you get you get a better hit. But uh, 
I mean, he's he's beating me by a bunch. Yeah, you know, so it I'm rips. Not making bad runs, so. God, I'm so happy for him that it rips. I mean, a little bit of a trial and tribulation with the old Packard setup, but yeah, once yep, it yep. works, man, it works. No, no, it rips hard. Rips hard. Uh, X3s are fast. Right. You know, so. Yeah, so we got a little bit of taste there. Something that we're going to talk about later is the uh, tuned and exhaust and intake X3 versus the bone stock X3. And you can tell it's traction limited up front, but down the track he starts to freight train a little bit harder than the bone stock X3. Yep, 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 yep. Whew! So many drag races. Yeah, man. I don't know what to say about it. Scott, what do you think about the supercharger? I'm digging it. All the headaches, uh, I feel we're worth it now. I agree with you, bro. The bang for the buck is there. I mean, not, you know, a super expensive machine. You right. Into a supercharger, like, yeah, you know, overall, she works good. I would say nobody should be disappointed by the way their machine ran there. No, absolutely. I think the first race when you had actual traction, you were right next to the bone stock X3, no problem. It was right there. And if, you know, you're rowing gears and doing all sorts of other stuff in this thing, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, down track, you definitely be able to seem to stay with the X3s where yep. then just, you know, once we get out, it's bye, everybody's leaving me. So. Right. No, it runs hard, man. It runs really hard. So, yeah, again, this isn't like a, you know, Packard sponsored video here. So, you know, the kit is definitely not totally complete from them, which leaves, sucks, but. It leaves some to be desired. Yeah, it leaves some stuff to figure out. The instructions are, you know, non-existent. Right. And, uh, you know, some of the things are lacking, like the, the quality of the airbox mount, you know, so. Yeah, but once you get it working and everything's working good, it seems to be, you know, quite the little setup, so. Yeah, bang for the buck is real. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For sure.